In this example, we're taking a look at how to solve a titration problem. If you remember, titration is just a lab technique. And in this lab technique, you're going to have a substance in a piece of equipment we call a burette. And the burette is a long piece of glassware. And at the end, near the end of the burette, there is an object called a stopcock. And that we turn to allow like drops to come out of this. And where we want those drops to end up is into our flask, which contains our sample that we're titrating. So that's sort of the general idea. Um, our sample would be in here that we are titrating. So in this particular example, we have a sample of vinegar. So in my flask would be my vinegar. And we use 10 mils of it. So I'm just kind of, I like to jot down sort of what we're using, a little picture. And in the burette, that's where my sodium hydroxide is. That's going to be my NaOH, my base. And uh, I know its concentration is 0 0.227 moles per liter. So from this, if I can measure exactly what volume of sodium hydroxide gets used to react all this vinegar, I'll have enough information that I'll be able to find the concentration of the vinegar just using some stoichiometry. So titration is the lab technique that uses the burette and the flask and, and does that work. The analysis of your titration is just using stoichiometry. So we can tackle this problem like any stoichiometry problem, which is let's start with our balanced chemical equation, write down what we know, and then find moles, use a mole ratio, and convert to whatever the final answer is that we want, in this case, a molar concentration. So if we write out our reaction in this case, it's going to be CH3COOH. That's the chemical equation for vinegar. We're reacting it with NaOH. So this is an acid. Vinegar is an acid. And my NaOH is our base. And we know that this reaction, when it takes place, is going to make a salt and water. So I'm going to write in my water. And the other product is the salt. The salt is going to involve the sodium and the acetate ion, okay? Because remember, the OH and this hydrogen right here is what's making the water. So we are going to end up with sodium acetate. which is that substance right there, and it would just be dissolved in the solution. We wouldn't see it. So I like to write down what I know. So I'm going to jot down my volume of my vinegar. I'm just going to put vinegar equals 10 mils. And as we've done a lot, it's useful to have this into liters because when we're calculating moles, we typically working with moles per liter. We're going to want volume in liters. So there's my 10 mils. Uh, in the uh, in the liters, I am trying to find my concentration of the vinegar. So that is what I'm looking for. I don't know the number of moles of the vinegar, but that's what we're going to try to get to. I know the concentration given in the question of the sodium hydroxide is 0 0.227 moles per liter, and the volume that we used of the NOH in our titration was 35.97 mils, which would be equivalent to 0 0.03597 liters. So that's enough information um, about the sodium hydroxide that based on what we know, I can take my concentration and my volume right, and I can do my calculation to get moles. So that's the first thing I'm going to want to do. The second thing I'm going to, to want to do is then do my mole ratio. And then the third thing I'm going to want to do once I've done my mole ratio is take that moles and use it along with the vinegar uh, volume to find the concentration. So that's the third thing I'm going to do is that, that series of calculations. Our next step then is to work through each of these different pieces to solve our problem, right? And we said the first thing was to find moles. So let's find moles of NaOH. So we're going to take moles of NaOH equals the concentration times the volume. So 0 0.227 moles per liter 
And we're going to multiply that by our volume, which was 0 0.03597 liters. So when we do that, we'll get a number of moles of 0 0.0018165100. Okay, so that's our moles of sodium hydroxide. And then once we have that, we're going to do our second step, which is our mole ratio. And because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, it makes it pretty easy. Um, so we could just make a statement if we want, or we could set up our ratio. I'll set it up in this case. Um, number of moles of our vinegar is going to equal the number of moles of NaOH. And then we multiply by our conversion factor, right? So if it's not a one-to-one, -one, if you set it up in this approach, it's going to work for you. Um, because we're trying to find out about the vinegar, we use from the balanced chemical equation the moles of vinegar uh, over the moles of our NaOH, which will be exactly the same because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. All right, so we know our moles of vinegar. So the last step then is to find the concentration of the vinegar. And this is where we use our original volume of our sample, which was 10 mils, and our number of moles. So concentration is just moles divided by volume. So we know 0 0.00816519 moles. And we want to divide by our volume, which was 10 mils, so that's 0 0.01000 liters. And that's going to give us our concentration of our vinegar. So you divide by 0 0.01, and you will get 0 0.816519 moles per liter, which, uh, if we're considering significant digits, and looking at the values that were in here, our volumes had four significant digits and our concentration had three. So it's all multiplication division. Our final answer should have the lowest number of significant digits. So 0 0.817 moles per liter would be the concentration. And there's how we solve a titration type problem, right? Remember the titration is the lab technique that gets us the data, right? Some really precise volumes. And as long as we know some concentration and of one substance and the volumes of each substance used, we'll be able to do stoichiometry, right? So the analysis of a titration problem is just stoichiometry.